really is more to you than just a pickpocket, isn't there? Call me Henry. You should have seen it. I had him eating out of me hand. There's someone to see you. Hey, why? Sorry, Liz. Why would I do a job with you? Well, we ain't ever worked together, Harry. Why haven't the, the Narrows gang and the Burke Street rats come together? If I see any of you north of Victoria Street, I will kill you. If you went and saw Harry, bought him a beer, everything would sort out. Nip it in the bud before someone really gets hurt. Let me read your leaves first. Ma, come on. A lady. Oh, she's a special one, all right. She's brave, too. What do you want, doll? Whiskey would be nice. <laughs> Will you get him? Will you get him good? Yeah, I've been a long way from home. Can't sleep at night. Grab your telephone. Something just ain't right. That's evil. Whiting really said. He said it. I had him over in the throat. He was like, and I said, uh, he, he was going, Mr. Taylor, please, please. He was, don't you fuck it. He was pissing himself all over the floor. <laughs> won the war. Oh. Oh, thank God. Long live the king. How many blokes you reckon long Harry's got? I don't know. A couple of dozen. Stokes. Stokes. Well, they're the same, give or take. What about us? You know how many blokes we've got. So we're outnumbered about three or four to one by each of them. Yeah, something like that. What are we doing here anyway? Hobnobbing with the rich and famous, my friend. Well, this place ain't so special. You're kidding? I'd sell me soul to have a place like this. When are we going to take another shot at Long Harry and his boys? We've smashed a few heads. That's payback enough for Doll. You pull me fucking leg. You are. You pull me fucking leg. We're going to start a war between Long Harry and Starks. I'll drink to that. 
and then we'll take over this town. Diggers had been returning from Europe for some time. Damaged men for whom the war had ended early. Among them, men who had seen and done terrible things in the fields and trenches of the Western Front. Men who would now do anything for a price. Henry Stokes sends his regards. So this cove shoots daily in the chest three times and you in the shoulder at point blank range and you didn't see him. He swore him, he just didn't recognise him. I'm asking your brother. Bunny doesn't talk to Jackson, I'm telling you. We don't know who he was. Give me a name, testify in court, and I promise you, he will swing. Haven't you heard the expression, hanging's too good for him? It's a police matter now, Whiting. You see, you coppers are going to put him for mass Whiting. and kids, are you? Leave no stone unturned, are you? Give me a fucking break. Yeah. If you or Long Harry take the law into your own hands, I am going to come down on you like a ton of shit. Well, we always knew you was a ton of shit, Brophy. Nice to hear you admit it. You fuckers have been warned. In the weeks that followed, the streets of Fitzroy were splattered with blood, teeth and singed hair as the tit-for-tat war between Henry Stokes and Long Harry Slater's men escalated. A war generated and orchestrated by Leslie Squizzy Taylor. The watch house cells, not to mention St Vincent's Hospital, were stretched to the limit. Honest crooks weren't safe in their beds. And if things ever looked like settling down, Squizzy would give the pot a good stir. <laughs> you missed the bloody dog, Snowy. <laughs> Get out. Sounds like more bad news for Henry. What? 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 I just delivered your order. You check out? Well, you don't trust me. No, I don't trust anyone. I heard more of your boys ended up at St. Vincent's last night, huh? This Fitzroy Vendetta. Yeah, the prick Whiting thinks someone's tried to shoot his dog. No, I never sent anyone to shoot the mangy mutt or his fucking dog. Well, must be uh, one of your boys trying to show a bit of initiative. When I find out who did it... I will have his balls. Well, you're not going to put up his hand, is he, Henry? How many of your boys are in the slammer or laid up at St Vincent's, Les? Oh, we've been, uh, we've been pretty lucky. Yeah, too bloody lucky, some might say. Oh, come on, Henry, you know me. Yeah, I do know you, Les. That's why I think you're up to something, you slimy little turd. Henry. If I find out you've done a deal, you will regret the day you were born. Oh, uh, Henry, I've done no deals, right? Why would I do anything to mess this up? You know how much I love this place? I say we stop fart asking about and make our move. Take out Long Harry and Stokes. No. I'll do it. I'm not frightened of either of those pricks. No. Why not? Because it's not the plan. Well, fuck the plan. The plan's taken too long. All right, I'll think about it. That's your problem, Liz. You do way too much thinking. Way too much. Whoever takes him out is going to be a fucking legend, and that's me.
what? Long Harry sends his regards. Get out of here, Long Harry's a dead man. Yeah, I know, mate. No point getting yourself all worked up. I swear on my mother's eyes, I'm gonna kill that fucker with my bare hands. And the shooter? I've never seen him before. But I'll never forget his face. Looked like something out of a freak show. Mm. Yeah, well, Long Harry's been recruiting diggers fresh off the boat. So Stokes. <clears throat> hey, you be staying with your mum then, Snowy? Yeah. Oh, you tell her I'll send her something each week, you know just to help make ends meet. Thanks, mate. Really appreciate that. Come on, we better let him get some rest. You get well now, Snow, are you here? I will. And mate, as far as I'm concerned, you already are a legend. feel things too deeply, Liz. Maybe Monsieur Cock needs a little French lesson. Sight for sore eyes. Come here. Hey? Yeah, you okay? You're all in one piece. You look good. Mate, I'm good. Good, good, good. Birds. To see you, buddy. Dolly. It's wonderful to have you home. Good to be home. <laughs> what happened to you? Hey, was it the big adventure you were hoping for? Hey? How many Huns you kill? I don't know. You don't know? What do you mean? How can you not know how many of those miserable clams you sent to the devil? Guess you had to be there. Are you having a dig, mate? No, I'm not. It's just... It was a shit fight and a lot of good blokes ain't coming home because of it. It's true. Ah, oh, well, we won. That's the main thing, hey? I'll make up a bed. Well, I don't want to be in any trouble. You're not. The victorious diggers brought home with them a range of afflictions. But the one that would have the most devastating effect is a contagion that would quickly become known as the Spanish flu. Over 12,000 Australians would succumb to the disease. On a global scale, it claimed up to 100 million lives. No one was safe. Not rich or poor, not saint or sinner. But not all the returning diggers' ailments were physical. Bert! <laughs> What's wrong? Bert, wake up! What's Thank wrong? You. Hang on, sir! Hang on, Him. 
Poor bugger. Take. Uh, Bert. Oh, poor Bert. What were you doing down there anyway? What do you think? What I wouldn't do is say you thought you'd get some from Tank, is that it? How can you say that? Oh, I don't know, I'm just asking the question. You really think I'd just nip down there for a quick route while you're up here having a sleep? I don't know. Jeez, Les. Sometimes you're the biggest fuckwit in Melbourne. The trouble with Dolly, she don't understand the kind of pressure a man's under. While she's snoring her head off, I'm lying awake all night dreaming up ways to destroy our enemies. Sit down and have a bite. Sorry, against the rules. No, oh, rules are made to be broken. Top up your cuppa. Please. There's a track winding back to an old-fashioned shack along the road to Gundagai, where the blue guns are growing and the barroom bench is flowing beneath that sunny sky. What's your name? Lorna Kelly. What's yours? Oh, you don't know. Should I? Oh, one day you will. Sounds like someone's got tickets on themselves. Alcohol is a curse, a poison to the moral health. It destroys families. It drags good, decent, God-fearing men and women into the occasion of sin and into the gutter of depravity, perversity and bestiality. So, the Fitzroy Vendetta. What's this uh, important information you've got for me? How would you like to have Long Harry's head on a stick, Mr. Brophy? How many men out back? Oh, six, boss. I reckon Taylor might have sold us a pup here, Cobber. We'll give him another couple of minutes, then fuck him. Sir. Shall we move in? Let him commit the crime first, lad. How many kids you got now? I got seven. And another little one on the way. I love my wife. I love your smokes too, son. But I take them out of my mouth occasionally. Alright, let's move. Please tell me Long Harry's in the morgue. No, no such luck. Copper took one in the chest. Is he married? Long Harry? No, the copper. I don't know. Has he got a family? I don't know. Well, if he does, sling him ten quid. Les. Les! What? He's young enough to be your daughter. <laughs> and Long Harry's mob is still walking around scot-free. After what he did to Dolly? All right, we'll go and do it. What? Go and do it. I will. Good. Good. No, 
Hello. It's getting chilly out there. Yeah. Liz with you? No, it's not. Huh. Did you see that copper long Harry shot? No, I didn't see nothing at all. There's something you should know. The paper reckons long Harry's gonna get off. There's no justice in the world, is there? No, there's not. Liz must be working late. You must. You know what? What? Just, you said there was something. What? I can't join you for tea. Right on. Just set a place for myself then. Squizzy's infidelity weighed heavily on Tankbuster. He knew there was nothing he could do to make it right. But there was one injustice he could do something about. What happened to you? The still unavenged gang rape of Dolly Gray. If he got the chance, Tank would punish each and every one of Long Harry's men, starting with Ted Whiting. For Dolly, you fucker! Ted Whiting was shot multiple times, including once in the head. Miraculously, none of the shots proved life threatening. Tankbuster's one-man vendetta, however, proved to be disappointingly short-lived. So I have the steak for you, sir, and the mixed grill for you, Lorna. Thanks, Lizzie. Why do you want to come here? I wanted my friends to see me out in the town with my Dutch and fella. <laughs> <laughs> can we go dancing after? We can do whatever your lovely heart desires. I gotta go spend a penny. Back in a dip. Yep. I've been looking for you everywhere. What the fuck are you doing here? Bert's been shot by the Jacks. Is he dead? No, he's at St. Vincent's. They just winged him. So come on, we gotta go. I, I, we gotta I get him I, I, out I, I, of there. Okay, go. He's your best mate. All right. All right, let's go, let's go. All right. Here, can you tell Lorna that I've had a family emergency? All right, I'm coming. Excuse me. I'm here to read verses from the good book to the patients. Sorry, lady. Uh, no, doctors no. and nurses only for this patient. Isn't that right, Constable? That's right, Doctor. Right. Get your head here. Yeah, right here, I'm so sorry. I've, I've forgotten my way out. Get up. Bugger me. You're a doctor? Yes, and I need to get you out of here, so you've got to follow doctor's oh. orders. Come here. Really? Where did you get it from? Oh, shit. Shut up. Oh. 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 Come on. In the car. Bird. No, 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 no. Bird. Tank, come on, you heavy bastard. Uh, get in the car. Birdie. Lorna. You did a bunk. I didn't. A friend of mine was in an accident. I, and I told Lizzie to tell you. She said you left with an older woman. No, she, she, she's just a friend of my friend who got hurt. Please, Lorna, open up. Is your friend all right? Yeah, he will be. But you know, I would, 
I would never have left if it wasn't a life or death emergency. You know that, okay? I've, he's my best mate. What happened to him? He had a motor car accident. Darling, you've been crying. Of course I've been crying. What'd you expect? I am... I am so sorry, all right? And, and I will... I will make it up to you, all right? I will take you out for a hundred fancy dinners to a hundred beautiful restaurants. I'm not like other girls, Liz. You're not taking advantage. I would never do that. I love you. I love you too. Stokes. Oh, there is no delivery set for tonight. I know. Liz, he's saying no, that. Not another word. This bloody flu. Business is down over 50%. Everybody's hurting. Here, Long Harry's out on bail. He wants a truce. He sent word he wants to parley. Well, that sounds like the perfect solution. I'd take a shooter if I were you, though. Nah, no, I'm not going, Les. But I'm glad you like the idea, because you are. Now, Henry. Your bloke botched the job on white. Well, how many lives does that fucker have? I don't give a fuck. Just made things ten times worse. <clears throat> They're not expecting us for another half hour, so we should have the drop on it. And then we put a bullet between Long Harry's eyes. Yes, and the whitings, and anyone else there with, all right? But we've got to do it clean this time, no witnesses. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Good. All right, Frank, go scout it out. M me, Liz? Yes, you. Here, wear this. Put your hat down, Brian. Well, you must have let your guard down, Liz. I ought to rip your head you off. You ought to what? You smug f What, you, you want to go a few rounds with me, do you, little man? Well, come on, then!
You're too ambitious for your own good, Les. Know your place. You're small fry. You always will be small fry. Now waddle off. Get your fucking hands off my suit! There's way too much thinking. Sometimes you're the biggest fuck with a mill. Wait, Lonnie Kelly. Oh, she's young enough to be your daughter. Next time, don't send your sloppy old mole to do your dirty work. Sounds like someone's got tickets on themselves. You're too ambitious for your own good, Les. Know your place. We got a pocket full of shit. Not much of anything else. I got a locket full of notes. Or melodies on county airfoils And it's been so long since I've seen you And I've been so gone Been out of my mind And things they move on But I just need you So I still wait for you most every night When I'm coming home it's so lonely here tonight You are I'm late last night Where were you? Working Working Doing what? Just the usual boring stuff Delivering grog Really? I thought you might have been out fucking that little slut you've been seeing. Well, you think I don't know? Say something to me! My eggs are getting cold. I'm going to work. You had me shot. You fucking bastard. Bullshit. It's not bullshit. What do you think I wouldn't work it out? Same bloke who shot Money Whiting. Same bloke you used to start your hopeless bloody. No, 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 no mate. Who, who sent money to your mum every week? Shut up, little man. Now I'm going to blow your brains out, and then I'm going to take a shit on your dead corpse. Sorry, are right. you? Your girlfriend do that for you? Hello? I'm oh, Dolly. Look, I know Liz hasn't mentioned me, but Come on, we need to have talk. Um, I I'm just on my way to my temperance meeting right now, so... Your temperance meeting? <laughs> well, you're in for a surprise, aren't you? You silly bitch! Les is my fella. My Les? No, my Les. He could charm the whiskers off your kitten, and I'm sure he has. But he's also a pickpocket, a sly gogger, and my pimp. No, I don't believe you. Well, I thought you might say that. He loves me and I love him. <laughs> you poor, sweet, stupid little girl. I'm not a girl. I'm not. And I don't care what you say. We love each other and we're getting married. And I'm having his baby. <gasps> Take a look at this. Enjoy.
sit on your corpse, you miserable, ungrateful prick. I wouldn't want to waste a good shit now, would I? <laughs> Which leg did I have you shot in again, huh? It was this one. <laughs> Take him out and get rid of him. Kill him. Myself, mate, I know me. Go. John Snowy Cutmore headed north to Sydney, where he joined Norman Brun's notorious Razor Gang. But Melbourne hadn't seen the last of him, and Squeezy Taylor hadn't heard the last of him. How'd you go? Stop. How do you take it? How do you reckon? Pissed himself. In my car? No. All right. Now that's done. Long Harry and Henry Stokes, those fuckers are dead. Listen closely. My brilliant idea is to get Henry Stokes and Long Harry together in the same place at the same time with guns loaded. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. What do you want, Jenkins? Step one. Get my trusty number three man, Ed Jenkins, to plant a horrible thought in Long Harry's suspicious little brain about... My mum. Step two. Lure Henry himself out of his den with the promise of a juicy deal. Invite him for a drink at, say... Railway Hotel. Henry Stokes and Long Harry. Three, warn the nearest policeman there's going to be a bloodbath. And last, keep your fingers crossed and hope for the best. Oh yes, I see many wonderful years ahead. Stokes wants to hit you hard where it hurts the most without risking any more casualties. But when I heard what he planned to do to her, well, sweet mother of God. So I've got your blessing. Oh, a million times <laughs> over. You two are a match made in heaven. There's an American bloke, Ponzi. He's making a bloody fortune. So we buy up international postal reply coupons. You brought me here to talk about stamps. Now, I brought you here to discuss a surefire money-making proposition. Not interested. Henry, if I say hasty, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. The missus is waiting. Henry, Henry, come on. T two minutes of your valuable time. Two minutes.
bloody hell, I've done it. I got rid of the buggers. The whole town's mine. I'm top dog. King of the hill. Ha! Long live the king. It's a man's job to be the breadwinner, right? None of her business how he does it. Corruption. Threats. And greed. From here on in, it's only the finest for me. Squizzy's rise and rise is unstoppable. The moment that will bring this Aussie legend to his knees. New underbelly Squizzy. Mr. Brophy, I want to get us back on an even keel. No, back to normal. What are we doing here, anyway? Hobnobbing with the rich and famous, my friend. Well, this place ain't so special. You kidding? I'd sell me soul to have a place like this. You are a sight for sore eyes. Come rip. Be OK? You're all in one piece. You look good. What's your name? Lorna Kelly. What's yours? Oh, well, you don't know. I'm not like other girls, Liz. You're not taking advantage. I would never do that. Les is my fella, but he's also a pit pocket, a sly grogger, and my pimp. No, I don't believe you. We love each other and we're getting married. And I'm having his baby. So I've got your blessing. Oh, a million times over. You two are a match made in heaven. We're going to start a war between Long Harry and Starks. And then we'll take over this town. The Fitzroy vendetta was over. Long Harry Slater refused to testify against Henry Stokes. Released on bail, he fled to Sydney. Stokes was found guilty of discharging a firearm in public. His six-month sentence was suspended, provided he too leave the state of Victoria. So Henry and his wife packed up their belongings and sailed back to Tasmania. And who did he leave in charge of his empire? You guessed it. Would you like to choose a fabric now, Mr. Taylor? Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, fond of something with a stripe, Leo. It makes uh, a man look... Uh... Uh, taller. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Taylor, sorry, I, I meant... No, it makes a man look more powerful, Leo. Yes, Mr. Taylor, it does. <clears throat> Happy is the man who findeth wisdom. Happy is the man who findeth himself boss of the wash with a shitload of dosh, says I. I'm king of the castle, and all the dirty rascals out there are doing my bidding. God bless them all. Trust you're having a good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. Hey. Your Honour, what a pleasure to meet you. Uh, come here, we'll have a photo. From here on in, it's only the finest for me. Finest food, clothes, cars, house, the best of everything. Let's get four champagnes for these lads on the house. Thank you. So who knows what's around the corner? A war, Spanish flu, there could even be a bullet with my name on it. What's Lady Luck's maiden name? Well, it's Miss Fortune, of course. <laughs> here on in, live in clover, because when you're dead, you're dead all over. Stokes wants an update on our financial situation. What are you going to tell him? That we're going great guns. Just had a few out-of-pocket expenses. Like the new car, the parties and the clothes? You don't have to worry about Stokes. He's not back for months. And when he does come back, I'm going to have to jack so far up his ass they'll be brushing his teeth. After all, it's the hottest betting club in town. What about Stokes' boys? Oh, Boss, we got a problem. We caught him red-handed with a pocket full of aces. 
No one likes a cheat, Cecil. I wasn't cheating. Shut the fuck up. Shh, 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 shh. Now, I could give you a stern warning and let you go. Thank you. But then that would make me look weak as piss. And for someone in my position, that's a dangerous thing. No. So I'm going to make sure the whole of Melbourne knows how I deal with cheats. Thank you. Les. Les. You're having a baby. Better go a couple of breasts quick, smart, and give her a feed. She's hungry. Now, Leslie, two things. She tore downstairs a bit, so she's going to need some time to mend. You understand? Yeah, what's that got to do with me? I know men have certain needs, so you're going to have to do the washing by hand until she's better. I don't do the washing. Well, you will now, young man, if you want to get the dirty water off your chest. Yeah. Do you understand? I do, me? yeah, yeah. Good. Come on. It's time to step up and provide a roof over your family's head. You're a good boy. I know you'll make your mother proud. When we want to love, when we love. When we want to kiss, we kiss. With a little petting, we're getting some fun out of life. When we want to work, we work. Oh, you don't have to worry about that, Lorne. But I do worry less. Oh, don't. In a happy setting, we're getting some fun out of life. Maybe we do right. It's a man's job to be the breadwinner, right? It's his job to do whatever he has to do to put food on the table and keep a roof over the head of his wife and kid. None of her business how he does it. Just like it's none of his business if Monday night's corned beef or shepherd's pie. The way I see it, marriage is about supporting each other through thick and thin and not asking stupid bloody questions that are just likely to upset me. Yes, yes. You should. We had to cut back on some expenses. Les hopes you understand. Hocus pocus, Fred. Science, John. It's the future. It's not my future, mate. You want to do yourself a favour? 
Turn up the heat on the Stokes place in Richmond. Give that little turd Squizzy some grief. Last time I did that, I copped a kick in the balls for my trouble. See, I reckon he's got friends in high places. Not anymore, he doesn't. Smile for the birdie. It's the police! Little man. You can't do this to me. Can't I? Do you know who I am? You're Squizzy Taylor. Jumped up shrimp. A nobody. I'm the fucking king of Melbourne. You're the king of nowhere, mate. job. Don't you want your daughter to grow up proud of her dad? I manage a high-class establishment. You sell sly grog and run an illegal gambling house. You've just been beaten up and arrested for goodness sake. If you saw the number of lawyers and judges who come into my club for a drink in a flutter. Doesn't make a right, Les. And since when is it your club? Where's June? I should have been there. Bruce is his own man. Well, then what am I paying you for? You're getting a flight in the courts, aren't you? I shouldn't be in the courts, Jack. I wouldn't be complaining if I was you. You've only got yourself to blame. So you didn't get a good look at the bomber? No. First concern was for my wife and family. Of course. Where are they now? Winnie's taking the children to her sisters. Your wife, she said she saw someone lurking around the place earlier on. Yes, but I've already spoken to her. She can't identify him. The bomb was apparently a tin packed with gelignite and nuts and bolts. Anyone hurt? Miraculously, no. Heard the blast from my place. How much damage? Detective Bruce's place is blown to bits. Fucking hell. When might I get a chance to talk to your wife? I just told you she can't identify him. Not consciously, but I'd like to try to put her under hypnotic trance. Jesus. Look, Brophy, the Bureau of Investigation in the United States has had great success in the area. We need evidence, witnesses. We, we can always try the old-fashioned way. Bust a few heads instead of trying to get inside them. Well, we were at a temperance meeting until 10, and then we came home and went to bed. Temperance meeting? Amazing, the roof didn't fall in. What about after that, around 1 o'clock this morning? 
Oh, well, now you've got me there, detective. I was up and about. Doing? Making a bomb, of course, to blow you and your loved ones Les, to you bits. shouldn't say such... No, that's what he's accusing me of. I can vouch for my husband, detective. I was up feeding June, our baby daughter. Les got up and made me a cuppa. A dutiful husband that I am. I looked at the clock. It was about ten after one. Thank you, Mrs Taylor. I'm just glad to hear your family is safe, detective. It must be terribly distressing for your wife. Yes, it is. You're gonna have to pull your head in, sunshine. He's not gonna intimidate me. Now listen, Jim. No, you listen. Uh, mate, no, I... you listen. My wife's sister gave me a white feather during the war for not enlisting. Well, she's a stupid cow, because you're a copper, essential service. Doesn't matter. Not when every other man in the family went off to fight. Her husband, her son. I keep that with me as a reminder for how important it is for me to do my duty as a police officer. That's very noble. Now, what about the safety of your wife and kids? Does that come first? I think you should get off gambling and slow grog for a while, take on other jobs. You can still be a good copper, do it for them. Fuck me, I've left my bloody hat in there. Think about what I said, Jim. I'm heading out, Lorne. I won't be long, all right? Hey, you listen to me, you little turd. You do not send blokes with bombs around to coppers' houses. You do not make threats to coppers' families. Is that understood? Is he gonna back off? He is. For now. Then we're apples. No, we're not apples. Any arrangement we've had is over. Finished. Are well, you trying to squeeze me another five and run? Shoot me. Come here. Just try it, Jack. I've dropped bigger blokes than you. Where's? Just forgot my hat, Mrs. Taylor. Where is it? Just forgot my hat, Mrs. Taylor. Good day to you. What? Got his hat. Seriously? What's his problem? Ah, if we were going to kill him, we would have used a bigger bomb. He's a cop tank. We can't expect him to use his brains. Someone's here. been going on? Henry, why didn't you tell me you were coming back? You've had your hand in the till. I had to blow your little tits off. Oh, from where I'm standing, looks like Tank and I have got you outgunned. Not from where I'm standing. All right. All right, come on. Fine, let me explain. Don't try and talk your way out of it, you little shit. Henry, come on. Get out of my sight before I blow your fucking balls off. Henry. Get out! Henry. Get out! And don't think this is over for one moment. It's not! I've never seen you handle a gun like that before. No. I thought you'd like that. I certainly did. What are we going to do, Les? Les! Fuck it. You know I was going to shoot them. Mm. <clears throat> All right. You got every reason to be angry at me. Let me have it. What? Hit me. What? Hit me. You pack quite a punch. <coughs> Fuck! Thank you. You've got no idea what it's been like, Henry. Bruce has been giving us a furious time. That we, prick. We bombed his house. Who thought that was a good idea? It was huh? risky. You but... bring all the Jacks in Melbourne down on us, you idiots. No, Bruce is going to back off for the good of his family. It's a win, Henry. So what, you go and buy yourself a big new house, a flash new car, all with my money? Yes, I did. Because, mate, I'm representing you. I had to look the part. 
Didn't expect us back early, did you, Les? I can't say I did, Annie. You think I was going to give you time to organise a welcome home party? Come on, Henry. I didn't get to where I am by being outsmarted by the likes of you, Les. You've got me all wrong. But a welcome home party sounds like a cracker of an idea. I'd like to have you two as the guests of honour at a big lavish do at my place just to show you how much you've been missed. As long as it's with your money, not mine. <laughs> Yeah, very funny. <laughs> what do you say? Fuck Henry Stokes. I was sick of that place anyway. Stokes boys like having their boss back. Yeah, dumb pricks. He gave him bonuses to keep him staunch. Now, um, what do you want me to do with these photographs? Tank, we're destined for bigger things. Much bigger things. Look out, you bastards. Now I want you to relax, Winifred. Just breathe in and breathe out. You're getting sleepy, you can hardly keep your eyes open. You're falling into a deep, deep sleep. Is she, um... I don't believe she is. Good Lord. I've done it. Winifred. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I'm taking you back. You saw a man outside your home on the evening of the bombing. You remember him? Yes. Excellent. Now I want you to describe him to me. In every last detail. He was a tall man with blonde hair. <coughs> Sorry what for the intrusion, Fleetler. How's the hocus pocus coming along, Fred? We're going to have to begin again. Yes? No, I didn't like it. Please, Mrs. Bruce, you were just about to give us a description of the bomber. No, I don't think it's proper for a Christian lady. I'm leaving. Sorry, Fred. Never would have held up in court anyway, Fred. Christ, it's dark in here. Well, there's there's archers, Macintosh, and the rail yards. Yeah. It's easier to move and harder to trace, and the good stuff, it's like spun fucking gold. We're off. You are? Oh, you have a good day, my darling. Yeah. Hey? You'll be a good girl for Mummy, won't you? <laughs> She's always a good girl, Dad. You have a good day, too. We will. We will. Bye, Bert. Boo. Mum's in a good mood. Yeah, I told her I'd start looking for a legit job. Really? Oh, an honest job. What would I do? I'd probably become a watchmaker. I'd really love to do a that. tank. I said I'd do it because it's what she wanted to hear. Right, yeah, so you're not serious. You're not really thinking about it. Well, I actually did for a bit. But then I'd rather kill myself than live a boring life. Now. to say, I love a nice piece of fabric. Chinese silk, a lovely bit of crepe de chine. Even a yard of quality tweed gets me going. It all started when I was a babe in arms, I suppose. I can still remember me mum giving me a scrap of crushed velvet to play with to keep me quiet. Partial handprint taken from the rail yard robbery. What's that supposed to tell us? That one of our crooks has at least one hand. The size of the print would indicate that the thief was of diminutive stature. Let's drag him in. Hang on, hang on. What more do you want? A whole lot bloody more. So one of our crooks is a short ass. So what? 
Could be Squizzy, might be a kid. I know a hundred kids that'd fit that bill. It's Squizzy Taylor. What if it's a Sheila? It's not a bloody woman, it's Squizzy Taylor. Didn't you hear him? He's there got a is nothing handprint. I would like more than to lock him up for keeps, but he has no form in warehouse robberies. Who's to say he's not broadening his horizons, Brophy? I say we take a harder look at him. Good luck. I've got a very urgent appointment at the pub. Of course you do. <laughs> Jax, run for it! Look, no, Eddie, you can't leave me shit. Come here, mate. Get, come here. Oh. Oh. Hey. Looks like we found lovers' lanes, Frank. Mm. <laughs> Finish up there and move along. Mm -hmm. Temperance people, why? There was a story about you in this afternoon's paper. Have you seen it? No. Oh, God, look at that photo. That's awful. That's why they asked me to leave, you oh, bastard. No, no. Come on. No, you said you'd given all of that up. Oh, I said I wasn't running Stokes' place. But anymore. you've got a respectable job. Which now. unfortunately doesn't pay as well. But what about what's right? Oh. What about doing what's right for me in June? I've lost my friends. I've lost all. No, oh, you've got plenty of friends, right? We're having a party here Friday night. You're going to make plenty of new ones. I won't come down. Yes, you will. No, I won't. Yes, you will, and that's the end of it. Right, we've got to put on a good turn for the Stokes. Otherwise, it's going to end very badly. And what does that mean? Just what I said. I've seen the way that woman looks at you, and it's not decent! You're imagining things, Lorna. Hey, get, get my scrapbook. Too much for you, Henry. <clears throat> so have you had any more trouble from the Jacks lately? No. Good. Good, I'm glad to hear. So we're back to business partners? Partners, Liz. With 50% discount on the grog supply until you've paid your debt. That sounds fair and equitable, doesn't it? <laughs> Check Justice so tall, fondling that girl. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't have thought this was to your wife's taste, Les. Oh no, you'd be surprised. Mm. Where is she anyway? Out banging the temperance drum? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, she's having a lie down upstairs. Oh, not the flu, I hope. No, 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 nothing contagious. Oh, a migraine. <sighs> <laughs> I'm going to get another one of these. Oh, great. Lorna, it's only me, Bert. Can I come in? Yes. Les, he, um, he asked me to come up and see how you were. He couldn't come himself? He's in the middle of things, being the host with the most and everything. Of course he is. I bought you some brandy. I don't drink. I know. It's um, for medicinal purposes, you know. But... Annie, you're missing the show. Oh, well. Some like to watch, some have other preferences. Hmm. Well, I 
hope you're enjoying yourself. Oh, I'm having a ball. When I met Les, I had no idea who he was or what he did. I know. See, I, I just want him to be a better person. He is the truest mate I've ever had. He's a criminal. I'm a criminal. If you grew up where we grew up, you'd do whatever you had to do to get out. Tell Les I won't be down this evening. I hope you feel better soon. Thanks, Bert. you from the bottom of my heart that I will be a better man. for speechifying, but uh, I'd, I'd actually like to make a very public welcome home to my dear friends, Henry and Annie Stokes. <laughs> and, and I'd like to present them, I'd like to present them with a gift just to show my boundless affection yeah. and high esteem for you both. <gasps> Raymond, let's get, a, let's get a photo in here to capture this for posterity. Those coats have been in our family for generations. You're telling me these weren't given to you by Squizzy Taylor? I put it to you that they were stolen from Edward Love and Company, Chapel Street, South Yarra, three nights ago. Pig's ass. Prove it. I have every intention of doing just that. Bloody pig, it who'd have thought? You should have, you show pony! Yeah. Gotta admit, Henry, it was a lovely photograph. What's the idea of giving us stolen property in the first it place? It was quality merchandise, which I'll happily replace. With mink. With mink, done. Oh, we should have given you up. Well, I'm very grateful that you didn't. We didn't, because I want to kill you yeah, myself. Wait, wait, boy, for boy, stop it! Les is gonna fix this, aren't you, Les? You have my word, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Just, just leave it with me, all right? That's right. Here it is. Scheduled for two days. Justices of the Peace Tatnell, K. 
Kelly and Whitney. Any, many, money, mo. Catch a nigger by the toe. If he moves, let him go. Any, many, money, mo. Hello, Mr. George Whitney. He's a chalky at the university. He teaches the classics, Latin. Yeah, I know Greek. what the classics are. Go on. Well, he lives in one of them colleges there. Oh, with his family? No family. Goes to church every Sunday, doesn't drink, doesn't even have a honey. Oh, there must be something, Tank. What does he do for fun? Well, goes to the pictures every Saturday night. These young men, these students, and they go for coffee afterwards at Tate's. Well, Tate's on Collins Street. Yeah. Well, it's quite appropriate that he teaches Greek then, isn't it? Oh, are you all right? Here, oh, let me help. Yes, I am. Oh, it's very kind of you. I don't know how blokes like George Whitney can look at themselves in the mirror. Poor bastards ought to be drowned at birth, I reckon. Gives me a funny feeling knowing I arranged the whole affair. <laughs> I made him fall in love. Sorry, let's see he's taken. It's taken by me, George. And so are these. Georgie Porgy, Puddin and Pie, kissed the girls and made them cry. But you're not likely to be kissing any girls, are you, Georgie? You bastard. Will the defendants rise? In the matter of the Crown versus Harold Stokes and Anne Charlotte Stokes, we find the defendants guilty. However, as this was not a unanimous decision of the bench, God only knows why, the penalty imposed will not be as severe as it otherwise might have been. Henry Stokes, you are hereby fined 25 pounds. And Charlotte Stokes, you are fined five pounds. Court is adjourned. What is going on here, Matt? A bloody fine. Stokes and his missus get away with a bloody fine. Thought you had a watertight case. Goods in custody. Well, obviously, Stokes has nobbled the bench. Dad or Taylor has. What, bribed the whole bench? It only takes one bad apple to ruin everything for us, James. So we just let him get away with anything now. Bombing houses, corrupting judges. The problem with you blokes is you play by the rules, then you look surprised when you get a kick in the nuts. What about you, eh? What about your arrest record? Meaning? Well, you've never laid a glove on Taylor. Why is that, Jack? Why are you protecting him? I'll bring him down before you do. Don't worry about that. Oh, is that right? Yeah, that's right. I'll do it my way, and when I do, I'll stick him up your sanctimonious asses. You want a couple of bob on number three in the fifth there, Fred? Bugger off, Brophy. Mm. What if I got my bookmaking ticket? Would you uh, see yourself as me penciler? Are you serious? Nah, probably not. I, I tell you, Roy Lauder, what do you reckon? She runs well in the wet. Yeah. Might be all right for a pun. Yeah, put a fire on for me. On the nose. Next question. Oh, Jack, huh? Very funny how much. What, 10 quid? You're not going anywhere. 20 quid. I'm charging you, you little pipsqueak, so shut the fuck up. No, no, no. I'm going to be bailed in an hour, and I'll be back to the track by lunch. You know that. Not if I can't find a bail justice in a hurry you want. You're a bastard. You're a bastard!
By the beginning of 1921, the Spanish flu epidemic was, by and large, considered to have passed. There were, however, still the occasional victims. And June Lorraine Taylor, aged seven months, was one of the last to succumb. She's dead, Liz. <laughs> Our little girl is dead. <laughs> He seems to give us a slip. Squizzy's running from rival gangs. You want war? I'll tell you when the time's right. Running from the law. Looks like the gloves are off. And running out of luck. Squizzy Taylor needs a lesson in respect. Meet the woman who steals more than his heart. If someone's going to end up getting killed. It might be you. New underbelly squizzy.